So look, our question is let's, status, let's change the status quo. Let's question the status quo. And one of the things you may have heard about and we need to question is where have all the women gone? Look, you may have heard this. Since I graduated from business school, we're now graduating more women, females from college than, and we have for years, than men. So there's lots of educated talent. MBA, we're not quite 50-50. I think this year we're 43% at Haas, right? So we're getting there faster and faster. Look, we're 51% of middle managers. We have been for more than a decade now. But we're 20% of senior executives, and we're only 5% of Fortune CEOs. Look at every industry out there. You're going to see the same. or comparable triangles. Yeah, I know, not in STEM, but everywhere else. I'm going to take you on a little journey and help you understand why this may be, why we've got this hole. Yeah, that's me in 91. Let's forget the polka dots. It was my dynasty era. <laughs> um, but I am grinning ear to ear. And the reason I'm grinning ear to ear is because I've landed a phenomenal job, thanks to Haas, in the um, Nestle Beverage uh, Brand Management Training Program. It is the first uh, step on my ladder to the top. I am so excited. There is nothing that's going to get in the way of me and my ambition. And I'm not alone. If you pulled my classmates, my female classmates, and the female classmates around the country who graduated in the middle 90s and the early 90s, we all thought that we'd be back here at our 25th reunion at the top of that ladder. Well, I went to a cocktail party last night with my classmates. Guess what? Not a single woman is at the top of that ladder. A couple of the men are. That was exciting. Not everyone can be, but the question was why. So let me show you why. That's our son, William Rossi. He was born six weeks early. He spent the first couple of weeks of his life being fed with a tube down his throat. It was tough. Nestle gave me four months maternity leave. It was awesome. It was the longest they'd ever given someone at my level. I was still committed to my career. I went back to, into the workforce. I was ready to go. Boom. I hit a wall. Researchers now call it maternal bias. I didn't know what it was then, but I did know that I was no longer getting plum assignments. I did know that coworkers, male coworkers who had less experience than I was at my same level were getting paid more than I was. I found that out. I also knew that my boss and my boss's boss kept asking me why I wasn't home with my son. Didn't I care? Didn't I want to be a good mom? Yeah, I quit. So I found a great new job at Footcone Belding Advertising Agency to help them build a new division. Got promoted to vice president in a year. I was on fire. My career was growing, landing great clients. We were ready for baby number two. Got pregnant, 24 weeks long on a plane, going to see a client. I went into preterm labor, back on bed rest. I know, it's a pretty picture. Look, here's the thing. I spent 16 weeks on bed rest. It was horrible. I was still committed to my career. I still wanted to go back and nail it. I went to my boss, I said, look, I need a little bit of time, I need to transit, I need to on-ramp. Part-time for a little while, you know, something from home, not an option. Be all in or don't be in at all. So I became something I never thought I would be, I never imagined. I became the opt-out mom. And here's the thing, I wasn't alone. Did I, I discovered that 30% of MBAs are, or excuse me, MBAs are 30% more likely to leave their careers than lawyers, doctors, and most other high-paying professions. Here's a scary statistic. If you went to an elite college like me, I went to Dartmouth, and then you went on to get your MBA, 65% of us stay home and leave our careers. Look, if you actually look, most of, the call, most of the business schools have not actually done an analysis on their alumni and what their alumni have done in their career paths, longitudinal career paths. Harvard has. 42% of Harvard alumni, women who graduated, who have now two kids, they're at home. The rest of them, they're working part-time. A few of them are working full-time, but most of them are working part-time. And it's not just MBAs. I know you've heard the statistics. 70% of women work, right? Mothers work in this country. Who's heard that statistic? Hello? Yes, you have. Guess what? 48% of them actually work full-time. The rest are working part-time. Hmm. So what does that mean? Well. It means that female workforce participation since I graduated from business school has completely stagnated. Other, industrial, other industrialized countries, in fact, every other industrialized country has seen a significant grow, growth. What does that mean for our economy? At economists, actually, at the World Bank did a study. It turns out our economy would be 11% stronger if we were actually tracking with our peers. Well, that's not good. Let me see. 
Oh, yes. Same shameless self self plug for my book. Here's the thing. I ended up wanting to find out why. In my career as a journalist, I was doing a lot of writing about women and women in the workplace, and I kept interviewing women who actually had paused their careers and then re-entered and did amazing things. That's not the narrative we're hearing about. That's not what's happening, and that's not what we need to have women do. We want them to actually be in the workforce. But in the re in the in doing research for my book, I was trying to figure out what had happened. Let me show you. If you compare us, and I just selected a couple of countries, but you can actually go to almost every industrialized country in the nation, here's the reality of what families, working families are facing. We have no paid leave, no paid sick leave, no paid maternity leave. We've got no mandatory vacation days. We actually have no child care. Working, okay, we are working harder than every country, including Japan, who just mandated now that you can have an only a 40-hour work week. 50% um, of salary workers report that they work more than 50 hours. How many of you are working more than 50 hours? I know I was. Yep, raise your hands. 20% of us say that we're working more, than, tw more than, 20, than 60 hours a week. It's not good. So why does this matter? Is this, oh, a woman's problem? Is this really an issue that we need to be worrying about? I'm telling you right now, it's a workplace problem. What was once considered my problem, least and you should have solved that on your own, is actually becoming a challenge for workplaces. We're not getting the best and bright talent because we're losing them. Millennials are retiring 10,000 a day. Gen Xs, there aren't enough of us to replace the talent we need. Millennials, oh, we love them. There's a heck of a lot of them. And they're breeding like crazy. In the next decade, <laughs> yeah, have you been around? Have you looked? I'm, I'm noticing. 64 million are going to become parents in the next decade. And guess what? Millennials, more than Gen X, more than boomers, report that they put family before career. 60% report that they believe one parent should stay home. They want to stay home. Whether we can decide whether we think that's the right thing for our economy, but that's what they want to do. Millennial men are reporting that they would rather put family first in their careers. A report out of Ernst & Young said that they discovered that 58% of millennial dads have already changed jobs, passed on promotions, or quit the workforce altogether because they wanted to put family first and their working environment did not allow them to do that. That same study showed something very concerning. 59% of millennials already that are parents today have already lost a spouse out of the workforce. It's not good for anybody. Look, the reality is for the last 30 years, we thought this was a woman's problem. I'm telling you, it's not a woman's problem. It is a workplace problem. If we don't actually change the way we work, take Adam's great company, who's investing today, um, and figure out how to do things differently, we're going to see an even larger se segment of millennials leave. It's not good for them. It's not good for business. And it's not good for our economy. Thanks very much.